Hello there, welcome back to Autism Advocating. Thanks for joining me and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you. Um, so those of you who are new here, Autism Advocating is all about sharing our autism journey, providing resources and tips, tools, strategies, anything we can to help families out there that are newly diagnosed um, or recently diagnosed, or maybe you've been diagnosed for a while for your child and you're just looking for some more information or to have someone to relate to what you're going through. And that brings us to our topic today. So I was on a call recently and it, um, I was reminded about what Christmas is like when your child is younger. Um, we've been through six Christmases so far and our first two, um, one to two and two years old time frame, um, pretty typical, nothing remarkable. We weren't diagnosed with having the di autism diagnosis at that time. Um, we were close to three years old because, um, of course, my son's birthday is in January, just after Christmas. Um, so coming up on his third birthday um, was when we were diagnosed with just after his third birthday. Um, we still didn't noted, note anything remarkable about Christmas, um, but definitely not as interested as uh, one would expect. Um, we kind of kept it low key at that time for Christmas and we have since then as well. Around the age of four or five, there um, started to be more interest. But let me back up here to that third birthday, fourth birthday, Christmas times, especially I think um, the third birthday. We were at my sister's house and everyone was gathered. We had uh, presents everywhere <laughs> and um my sisters tend to spoil my <laughs> children and um my son was just not into it he was watching his ipad mostly i believe and um he was not engaged that was difficult for us he did not want to open presents he was not um interested in what others are doing and we were noticing he was a bit overstimulated so we were giving him breaks and um, taking him out of the area where everyone was and all the presents and all the commotion and everything and we ended up at the end of the evening with the majority of his presents unopened. Um, luckily my family was very good about it at the time and they still are that it wasn't a big deal. He'll open them when he wants to open them and it worked great. He had a present a day for the next, I don't know, 10 to 20 days because that's how far overboard things uh, tend to go in our family. But the good news is, you know, we just had, we rolled with it, but it does not make it any easier. Um, I remember the emotions and just feeling like um, this isn't fair. Uh, why does it have to be this hard for him? Um, you know, those tough emotions that are hard to process as a parent, you know, the why my child, what did I do wrong? Um, you know, all those questions that go through your head. And even just thinking about it now, I just remember keeping it to myself and not saying anything because of the feeling that nobody would really understand um, besides my husband. And I think we did discuss it at, at one point, but we were so like, we weren't still weren't diagnosed. We were waiting for our appointment and um, for that Christmas, I believe. And um, we just weren't, I don't know. We weren't sure of anything to be honest. And you want to just chalk it up to his age or he's just, maybe he just doesn't like gifts, but what child doesn't like gifts, you know? Um, but we made it through that Christmas and um, we just embraced the fact that, you know what, the good news is he gets a present today and we have new toys, which are exciting to check out even for a short period of time because there was a lack of interest in playing um, and playing with new toys. He'd maybe look at it if it wasn't something that fit the bill for what he liked and what he wanted. It just got set aside. Um, <coughs> as Christmases went on, 
uh, things have improved. So that's the good news for any parents out there that are stuck where we were. Um, each Christmas is different and we have learned that, that this Christmas may not look like we wanted it to, it may not look what we like what we expected, but honestly, your child is going to keep developing through the years in certain ways and it may look different because you have a whole year that passes before that next Christmas and we just learn to roll with it for Christmas. If we felt like um, we can't do a family Christmas, we don't do a family Christmas. Uh, we figured out our traditions and what is true for us and our family and we really try to hold true to that. Um, as he turned into that four and five years old, he got the hang of it. Uh, he was learning that, okay, this is what we do. We open presents at this time. Um, last year was probably one of my favorite Christmases <laughs> because it was very typical. Uh, so he was just about to turn six and he wanted to just open presents rapid fire. Let's get this rolling. One to the next to the next. And he wasn't even looking. He was just taking paper off the presents, um, which was fun, you know, different, <laughs> but fun nonetheless. Um, unless he got stuck. He did get stuck on a couple presents that were super exciting. And then he wanted to just um, play with those. But this year, um, we found that we have to do things a difference again. And we had to do a countdown to Christmas because we do have a Christmas train. And because my son loves the train so much, he gets so excited about this train. And we it, he knows it's put away until Christmas time, time because it's loud. Um, it's a pain in the butt when it falls off the track and you constantly have to put it back on. And um, it plays loud music. There's zero speaker to control the volume. Um, so it is the Christmas train. So as soon as he started seeing that Christmas was coming, we, he started asking. So we started a countdown and we have a calendar with the days and he knows his days of the week. So as this um, Saturday got closer, we started counting down. Okay, on Saturday and it's Wednesday and all of those things. So Saturday he got super excited. We're getting the tree put up and the, that means the Christmas train is coming. And he has not leave, left this Christmas tree since yesterday morning when it got put up and that's totally okay. The other thing that we have learned, um, which we learned last year, is we are not able to wrap presents and put them under the tree right now because there's we're still learning that just because there's Christmas presents under the tree does not mean that they're all ours <laughs> to open. Um, so that's that one's a little difficult for mom and dad because we'd like to not have to do all of our wrapping at the last minute or um, we'd like to see presents under the tree. But nonetheless, we roll with the punches and it's not a big deal. We blow it off. What are the big things to worry about? What are the little things that we can blow off? This one is a little thing that we can blow off. Um, we've got bigger concerns right now with COVID uh, and what that's going to look like for uh, family gatherings and stuff like that. But we're keeping in mind what is true for us and what is true for our family. And that is that Christmas morning, it's our time. And he gets his presents from mom and dad and Santa. And that can look like whatever he needs it to look like. If he wants to just rip into all of them, we embrace it. If he wants to one at a time, open his presents, play with it, whatever, that's what we're doing. So um, I just wanted to let you all know, you know, what Christmases can look like and give you hope that if this Christmas doesn't look the way you expected it to or you dreamed that it would look, hold on to the hope for next year and remember what's true for your family. And that is the love, the spirit of Christmas is there and just hug your babies closer and tell them you love them. That's all you can do. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and you'll be seeing me back here on Autism Advocating on YouTube soon.